the book of Psalm chapter 2, I'm going to begin reading it, verse 1 through verse 3. Why do the heathen rage, and the people imagine the vain thing? And the kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointing, saying, Let's break their bands asunder, and cast their cords from us. America has forgotten God, no doubt. How many churches do you suppose have Vicarbog over the church doors in America? And if you look it up in the book of Samuel, you'll find uh, the meaning of it, saying the glory of God is departed. America used to be. America is great because she's been good through the years. If I go back in Deuteronomy chapter 28. It talks about the blessings of Israel. God said, I'll make the head of the nation. You shall lend to many nations and bar from none. Deuteronomy 8, a warning from God. Or chapter 6, I believe it is. Chapter 6, uh, a warning from God. Beware lest I forget God. Psalm chapter 106, verse 21. They forgot God, their Savior. Psalm uh, 106, verse 41. God gave them in the hands of the heathens, and they that hated them ruled over them. We look at Psalm chapter 95, and you read those scriptures in 9 and 10, verses 9 and 10. Forty long years. I mean, God said, I was grieved with this generation. And God swore in his wrath that he should not enter his rest. We find again in uh, Jeremiah I brought you into a plentiful country to eat the fruits thereof and the goodness, but when you entered in, you defiled my land, made my heritage abomination. And the priest said not. Don't that remind you, a lot of preachers today? Where is the Lord? That's a lot of churches today. They go to church, but the Lord is not there with them. I do believe that with all my heart. Amen. And those that handle the law did not know me. The rulers... Also, rest against me. The prophets prophesied the Baal and walked after things that do not profit. My people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of the living water, and hewed themselves a cistern, broken cistern that can hold no water. You know, a cistern don't hold no water if it's, if it's not right. Amen. And Isaiah, we find a little later on in prophecy, but they rebelled and fixed his Holy Spirit. Therefore, he was turned to be their enemy, and he fought against them. God fought against his own people. I, I, I mean, the apple of his eye. Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 37, says this about the nation of Israel, because they forgot God. Just like America has forgotten God these days, I do believe. I will cause you to pass under the rod, Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 37. John chapter 1, verse 11. He came to his own, his own received him not. And we find in Matthew chapter 21, verse 43, say, Therefore un I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing uh, forth fruits thereof. And that, that's the miracle, I, I, I do believe, in the days that uh, uh, we're talking about uh, through the prophecy. Amen. Acts chapter 15, verse 14, Simon had declared how God at first had visited the Gentiles to take out a people for his name. He did that, didn't he? And in 1776, God gave us America. And what made America great, no doubt. God, gut, and gun. Amen. Alex D. Talks Aquila, a famous Frenchman, came to America. A French philosopher who visited her shores when America was just a young nation. And left a similar warning. Alex D. Talks Aquila said he came to the United States to learn what magic quality enabled a handful of people to defeat the mighty British uh, Empire three times, or two times, wasn't it? Two times he uh, defeated the British Empire. He looked for greatness of America in her harbors and rivers and her fertile land and boundless forests and mines and, and other natural resources. He studied America's school, her Congress, her Massachusetts Constitution. Without comprehension, uh, uh, America's uh, power not until he went into churches of America and heard pulpit to flame with righteousness did he understand the sickness that and the genuine and the strength. And uh, said this uh, Frenchman, he, he returned back to 
his homeland. And he said this, America is great because America is good. And if America ever ceases to be good, America will cease to be great. And, uh, yeah, I think about this, uh, what uh, Brother Brian Biggs, he told this story several years ago at, uh, uh, at the Valley, Peaceful Valley Baptist Church in uh, Rising Fund, Georgia. I never have forgot it this day on. And we find, we find the greatness of America begin in 1620. Mayflower Compact. And God, amen. That's where it started out. Before they got off the Mayflower. Landed at uh, Plymouth Raw. The birth of the nation, most of the colonies in the United States, started over 300 years ago where Bible proclaiming schools originally. Harvard and Yale, just take a look at them today and see what they have produced today. And uh, they're turned into secular schools today, amen. Declaration of Independence. The forename that God was given in the document declared that we're no longer considered ourselves a part of the British Empire. And this and this, here's the way it goes. Uh, nature is God, creator, supreme judge of the world, divine providence, only country in the world with God on their money. In 18, uh, 1782, I believe it was, Congress passed a law, Bible for the military, and also our public schools. In 1963, Congress passed another law. No Bibles in her school. 1973, another bad mistake the Supreme Court judge made. Passed a law to kill babies. And 1980, in Kentucky, last of the Ten Commandments come off the school walls. Ten Commandment Monument, uh, I recall. I went down to Montgomery, Alabama many times, uh, several times, and uh, we helped rallies uh, and helped uh, what little we could with Judge Roy Moore when they fired him for having uh, Ten uh, Commandments uh, in the rotunda. Uh, and I'm talking about in 2003. The Dirty Eight and the SBLC, that's Southern Property Law Center, and the ACLU, and along with Bill Pryor, for Judge Roy Moore for acknowledging God. In 2005, God was omitted out of the pledge in California. I also, same year, Lawrence vs. Texas, Sodom law struck down in 2003, and now in, in 2014, 16 states where it's legal, two pigs can lock lips and get something, hey man. In order to make anybody mad, hey amen. I believe that'll puke a maggot off any good new gut wagon, hey amen. I was going to say a while ago, how many churches do you suppose have Ichabod over their church doors in America today? This poem, I, I learned, I memorized two poems. It impressed me so much. I, I memorized two poems from uh, Roy Moore. I won't quote both of them, but I'll quote uh, a couple of them in parts. Uh, America the beautiful, or so used to be, land of pilgrim pride. I'm glad they'll never see babies piled in dumpsters, abortion on demand. Sweet land of liberty, you built your house upon the sand. Wonder aimless poison by cocaine, choosing indulging her lust when God said abstain from sea to shining sea, our nation has turned away from the teach of the love of God and need always pray. Here's the way the other go. Our one nation under God was her sign and declaration upon the law of nature of God, they built a mighty nation. For unlike man before them, who had walked this earth and sod, these men would never question the sovereignty of God. That all men were created with the truth and self-evidence to secure the rights of God gave us uh, through the role of the government. And if any form of government be destructed to this end, it was a right and a duty a new one begin. So firm reliance on divine providence for protection, they pledged their scared honor and sought his wise direction. They lived an appeal to God for the world to see and declared their independence forever to be free. I'm glad they're not here with us to see the mess we're in. How we given up our rights for a life indulging sin. For when abortion isn't murder and sodomy is deemed a right, then evil is called good and darkness is now called light. I, I, read, I was reading this morning uh, about some documents about our forefathers and, uh, and patriots and I read to come across this, uh, what uh, Rush Limbaugh said it's about our freedom. He said it was tested by blood and watered with tears. I say amen to that. In uh, 1775, Samuel Adams and uh, John Hancock had a bounty of 500 pounds on their head. You think about it. Standing for your rights and my rights today. And look how we let it slip right through our hands today, amen. Nathan Hale, a patriot, a statesman, amen. Where are they today, amen? 
I regret I only have one life to give for my country. Patrick Henry, give me liberty or give me death. Andrew Jackson. That book, sir, what a man was uh, Andrew Jackson was. That, that book, sir, is a rock upon our republic was born. 1611 King James Bible. All other Bibles are junk. I said all other Bibles are junk. They didn't even have them uh, new versions back then. <laughs> Thank God. It was built up on this old 1611 King James Bible. Just like uh, David when he killed Lie. That old sword. There's none like it in the land. Amen. Uh, in Acts chapter 15, verse 26, it goes with this uh, pretty good, I think. Men that hazard their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what these men did. Andrew Jackson uh, and uh, Patrick and uh, Nathan Hale and John Hancock and John Adams and Samuel Adams. Death of the nation. We owe our soul to the Red Chinese. And the national debt is $17 trillion. But in every nation that feareth him and worketh righteous, is accepted of him. Acts chapter 10, verse 30. We're not being accepted with God in these last days. Amen. The head man. The, uh, what do you call these? Uh, uh, tyrants and kings and rulers and dictators. The head man, who's saying, hates God and loves the Koran. Hates the people that cling to their guns and their religion. Uh, Bible said, Righteousness exalts the nation, but sin to reproach any people. Amen. Blessed is the nation whose God is Lord. It used to be for years, but nay, look at us today. Uh, here's a newscast just here a while back. Diane Sawyers and Louis Farrakhan, uh, they may be right. They believe Obama is the Messiah, and God will send you strong illusion to believe, and they believe that. Amen. 2 Thessalonians 2, 11. For this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be deaf. Who believed not the truth but had pleasure and unrighteousness. God have mercy on these uh, preachers that won't lift up their voice against them. They don't even uh, preach on politics because they're scared to death. Amen. And this country was founded on politics and religion and God guts and gun. Amen. Now, who cares? I'm talking about uh, God have mercy on these uh, preachers that voted for Hussein the last two elections. You know, health care. You can keep your own health care. You can keep your own doctor. And and now we postponed this uh, uh, new law he got. Uh, 2014, it just begun just a few days ago. And now he postponed it again at the word of a dictator, amen. And we kicked the can down the road. I just like the Republicans. They sat back and we're going to get them. We get them next election. We'll get them at, uh, uh, when we have to uh, balance the budget and, and all this stuff. And here's Ben Gaza, two years later, IRS, Fast and Furious, Holder lied, Clip, uh, Clapper lied, uh, Lewis R Lerner took the fifth, and James Roden a spy. Now, we're, we're Cl what Clinton, where's she been at all this? What difference does it make, she said? I, the the uh, Republicans are so confused. I think they're in the bed with the uh, Democrats. Amen. I believe they're up in Washington whistling Dixie. Amen. And the, na and the nation's top preacher. What a shame. We have so many preachers in these days. It's like I said, they're whistling Dixie along with the politicians. Amen. Won't stand for nothing. I think about Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 8. I talked about uh, that up to that uh, portion of scripture that time for this and time for that and I, he got down to verse 8 and he said it's time for war, amen. It's time to our preachers roll up her shirt sleeves and sweat a little bit, amen. Maybe even have to go to work for a living, amen. I look like I got a, some uh, statement from a preacher down here in Georgia, Brother Ricky. I, I just like I, what I'm doing today. Uh, Brother Ricky, I'm exposing uh, names and things today. What you said the church folks didn't, and I partially believe that. I honestly believe that from the depth of my heart. Every church person don't care nothing about. You cannot and you will not preach on politics in your church, will you? Name calling. The fear of hurting someone's little feeling. That's exactly the reason why a preacher don't preach on nothing. This country was founded, just like I said, on the Bible. And guts 